Okay, so this is a uh, another video for the Wolf Wave, and uh, I just closed off my position in the Tesla 175 puts that expire uh, November 25th, and uh, that was for a 45% move. Um, I could have got the weeklies, and that would have translated into around 80%, but um, I'm going to discuss this uh, trade setup. So um, yesterday, um, from the PPI numbers, we had Tesla rip up along with the rest of the market. And it moved up uh, substantially, around 5% pre-market. So there was a gap that was created. And then you can see that the gap uh, was filled uh, shortly after the open as it pulled back. However, um, there was a bearish wave entry that triggered um, approximately 35, 40 minutes uh, after the opening bell. And, um, and then you got this horizontal line here representing the stop loss at 200. And as price uh, continued to sell off, uh, we opened a position um, right around here at uh, the 175 puts for $2.05 and then closed it. Uh, here at around 270 okay so um, now there, there's I'm going to talk about this chart in detail kind of go through the psychology and, and what I was looking for so whenever this uh, bearish wave or any wolf wave is set up uh, you probably want to just um, like the, the wolf wave will set up and display the the boundaries, right? So it's creating these uh, red lines, one and three, and then extending it out into space, forming an apex at, at some sort of point in time. And then two and four also does that. So they'll eventually converge sometime out in the future. So that that's just the structure. And then one and three, four will connect with the perforated red line identifying the maximum target okay so maximum target doesn't mean 100% uh, target it just means that um, that's what the setup the opportunity uh, that is being provided to you uh, this is the trade set trade that you know, you're looking at the risk and reward um, and and then also you would probably need to look at the macro events because on a 70 minute time frame that's going to take a bit longer than you know for the trade to develop with respect to like as opposed to like a one minute five minute ten minute wolf wave setup right because those you're, you're you're changing the time frame from a, a longer time frame from 70 minute all the way down to like you know three minutes so you don't want to um, overstay your welcome in, in any of the, those time frames, those time frames usually you want to hold them for no longer than four to five cycles. Four to five cycles with respect to your time frame. So, if your cycles uh, are referencing five minutes, then uh, you don't want to stay there uh, no longer than you know fifteen to five, uh, twenty minutes, right? So five times four cycles is twenty minutes. Five times three is 15 minutes. Okay, so once you have this uh, set up, then um, what you can also do is introduce um, secondary trend lines that you can identify. So for example, and then it's basically a trend line um, is is anything where you, I mean, there's so, there's so many trend lines you can draw, but with respect to this bear, bearish setup, you want to probably just connect two um, points on a candlestick where it looked like it bounced off of some sort of support. So it bounced here, it bounced here. So you can pick any one of these. So this one uh, you could you, you could pick, but um, and then and then you can evaluate the the gradient so that gradient is kind of steep and then as you can see how price kind of moves uh, into that yellow line that I introduced it it doesn't really 
um, continue in the in the trend of that gradient, right? It's kind of just rolling over. So what you want to try to do is use a, a trend line that has a relatively flat but a gradient that's greater than uh, say about 25 degrees. So that would be, let's just say that that looks like a 30, I mean 45 is that, I would say that would be about 30, 30 degrees and that would be uh, not a bad uh, trend line to model uh, with respect to this type of price action, especially after uh, the move here off of the uh, lows on Monday. And then you want to draw another line showing the extension. So that would take this line here and and that line right here, that pivot showing the, now you're showing um, a, a gradient that's about 45 degrees. Okay, so when you see, like I don't know, I can't really remove all the drawings, but when you see your original trend line that was relatively flat, so between 30 to 25 degrees, that's this one right here, let's make, change that color. Let's change that color to like um, a neutral color, like, uh, I don't know, let's just pick green and then thicken that up just for visual. So the, the trend, the, the trend line that you're modeling you off of the points of the candlestick where it looks like price has reacted uh, and then you want to connect two points in space where the gradient is not that steep. Okay, The first one shouldn't be steep and that will help you understand where that where price price is trading relative to that line that you drew in. Okay, The second line is the um, exaggerate is a is an exaggerated line right or a line that represents a 45 degree angle and that's going to be um, characterizing the the um, the fast the impulsive move of the price um, that a stock would typically make so if you look at this one right here, you can't really draw a trend line unless you draw a long-term trend line. But for, because we're not really, this one right here, you can see, well, I'll talk about that later. But here, the, the yellow line is just modeling the, the 45 degree angle. So then as soon as it breaks through that yellow trend line, then you know that like the profit taking and then the probability of the bear entry is is increasing such that the target um, is likely to reach about 50 to 100 percent of the max target okay so then options again ha is like so if you go into options you have to understand that uh, options has got that theta decay so once a move um, starts to develop then um, it tends to kind of consolidate and then you got your premium decaying those contracts. So whenever you get that long and hard red candle, then you gotta look to, con look to consider taking um, some profits off the table. Usually you go in about, let's just say you go in with like 10 contracts at around here. And then once you get that big sell, sell candle, right, those big ones here, then you want to consider closing either half, where the profits, if you reach about 80 to 100%, then the, the, the remainder is basically free. Or you want to, if you want to continue to, uh, you could also consider closing eight of those contracts, so 80% of the contracts, and leave two as runners. So once, so when you draw in these lines connecting two points in space, you want to draw two lines 
where the first one has a gradient of around 30 to 25 percent and that will help you understand how the price action is trading with respect to the time frame that you're monitoring and then you once the move so once the move starts to um, extend then you want to draw the second line here representing that break okay so as it keeps on moving higher obviously you can't really draw the break uh, draw that line until the, the two candles uh, until these two candles are formed but what you can do is you can just draw it anyways at a 45 degree angle and then you can um, you can have a better idea of how where your entry or what the probability of the the bearish wave is going to play out um, as it continues as as price moves toward and breaks through that uh, 45 degree angle now um, so once so you can do so once that once you do that for the um, for this side here now you can do it on the inverse okay on the opposite side so let's do this with the green line so that green line is basically representing a that same gradient as this line right here, so around 25 to 30 degrees. And that's connecting, uh, well, basically here is actually connecting three points in time, right? One, two, and three. So you need at least two. And once you've connected that, you can see that the, um, the next line that you can draw uh, as price moves away from it, from that 20, 25, 30 degree angle, you can see an extension line, that uh, 45 degree angle coming in here. Okay. And you can we'll represent that here. Okay, so now you have two ways of looking at uh, the price. And now, so once so if you got them if you entered here or here wherever and then you get that move that is i think it's approximately like six percent like from here to yeah six five point seven two that's a pretty big move in weeklies or any contracts uh one or two weeks out and um you definitely want to manage those profits because what you can see after a big red candle uh, you get some consolidation here that's um, that's chopping off those contracts okay so now once you see that and you draw that 45 degree angle in your holding runners you can you can now have a clear idea of where you want to close that position those last two contracts or the last five contracts and then with candlestick analysis, you can also interpret this candlestick combo one and two as a BLT. So if this candle here is a long red candle and this one remains as a doji, then the um, idea is that the next, the subsequent candle is going to be equal to or greater than uh, the can the this this candle right here. So it's basically taking this candle and um, translating it down to the the uh, to the uh, wherever this candle opened so at 188 and then you would um, let's see if I can draw that in there so I'll take the height of this candle and then I would drop it all the way down to where the that that green candle opened and then that would take it down to 182 okay if you get into an entry here obviously it bounced all the way up to 189 that would have been another entry if the assumption is that this candlestick combination is going to play out to the downside and then if it makes another red candle you would take profits you'd see how it consolidate on the next candle because it could do the same thing like that and then move another uh, red candle that's long and hard all the way toward the max target because every time the the price makes a big move you can see that here it makes a ginormous move higher and then it just trades relatively flat okay and that's the nature of these this the stock market where uh, where the money is made um, there's probably going to be some profit 
a lot of profit taking coming in um, before the next move up. And most of the time, those positions, when they do move higher or lower in a directional, in a very in a directional manner that's accelerating uh, at an increasing rate, uh, those positions are usually opened before uh, the market opens or um, before the before the trader has any time to react. Okay, and that's usually uh, before the market opens. So yeah, here, now you can see that the um, the gradient on this line for Tesla is is acting as a, um, as a guide for, for those who are holding any more positions and allowing you to understand that it's still in a downtrend here it's just like the opposite as it moved higher okay on two green candles here it's moved lower on two red candles as soon as it formed that first red candle that kind of represents like a dark cloud or reversal semi reversal situation where those sellers are now in control now on the flip side when you have two red candles here and it's forming this doji that's in decision so it's deciding whether or not it's going to move lower or reverse out of here and then try to reclaim the um, right try to push the price above those moving averages um, you know tomorrow so we, we don't know exactly how this is going to play out all we can do is really manage our risk and then once the price starts to extend away from the gradient that you developed here, that you modeled here into what, with a gradient of negative 25 to negative 30 degrees, then that the second gradient, which is going to be steeper, approximately 45, can be modeled in regardless of the price. Because that, that's usually, unless there's really bad news, if there's really bad news, then the gradient is going to go straight down. You know, it's going to go vertical. And it's going to gap down but if it's just the natural trend of the market then that natural trend when especially when it accelerates it's going to accelerate at an increasing rate and then take a couple of breathers along the way and that acceleration at an increasing rate can be modeled using the yellow lines that i've put put in here and that's approximately 45 degrees okay now when we look at the wolf wave and see where the apex is pointing. You can see that the apex is pointing to a target time, a date for Tesla to reach fifty dollars uh, in 2022 December. So by the end of December, it, Tesla is going to reach fifty dollars if this if this continues to trend lower. So realistically, that's not possible, right? Um, it's well. Let me rephrase that. Anything is possible, the pro but the probability is, is really low. The, the probability is higher um, for short term reaching that, that uh, the maximum target of what? 171 to 163. Well, you can kind of see if you use your um, the gradient here, negative 45, you can see that it also forms an apex at around November 17th. That's tomorrow for a max target of um, 166. So that's 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 probable, okay? Because you're it's in a trend, it's moving lower, and then if it breaks through the trend and closes above it, right? Then it's not going to happen. So that helps you understand how to um, instead of using stop loss, because stop losses. Uh, generally, you shouldn't be using stop losses unless uh, you have um, a specific strategy associated with it. But uh, especially with options, your stop loss is your position size. So if you're using if you're using options in this trade, um, the first thing you've always got to remember is to always take profits on those long green or red candles, and then either 50% of the position or 80%, and then draw in that gradient that's 45 degrees, and then use that as your um, your mental stop, okay? So once it closes above it, then your positions are obviously, the value of your positions are gonna draw in down, but if it's reduced from 
you know, for example, 10 from 10 to 2. So it's not that bad. But if the if the position continues to, if the price continues to trade, stay under this yellow line, the premiums will decay, but you have no reason to close it because of the, the trend, right? So the trend will continue to move in the, the path of least resistance. And since you've you since you're using since this is a 78 minute time frame you should understand that um, two to three cycles on a 78 minute time frame is going to be at least 1.5 days so you got today and then also because we opened up the position literally five minutes uh, after after hours uh, is not really used in the calculation or part of the cycle calculation however um, because the, the market's still closed. So you would want to use the the actual market hours to calculate your, your holding time, uh, three to four cycles. So that would take us into at least Thursday. And as long as, it, as, long as it's staying under this trend, then uh, there's no reason to close the position. So if you're trading stock uh, shares of, the, of, of Tesla, then uh, you're gonna, you can create the same rule right and let's say you're long so let's take a look at a long setup so here's a long setup in Tesla let me move all these lines and right now you can't really draw I mean you can draw like a line a vertical line like this uh, sorry not a vertical like a, a trend line like this and obviously it broke right so then your next trend line that's going to be representing a 30 to 25 degree angle uh, is going to be like that okay so now the the trend has kind of is it's kind of like in a trendless market it's like is it going higher is it going lower and you can't really tell uh, using this this candle now the daily there's a daily wolf wave that is being displayed here and um, and you can see that the moving averages are all in a negative gradient position. So uh, what we can do first is look at the past action here and then kind of like draw, connect two points in space, so one and two. And that that's kind of like looking like a 45 degree angle, right? And then here we can connect two more points and then it actually extended I think that would be a 25 degree yeah that's like 25 or 30 and this is probably like a 45 maybe a little bit steeper so you can see where the as price extended away you know you get that binary event on PPI and then it reversed and now it's kind of trading sideways here and, and then if we draw the next trend line you can see that as it bounced it's started to develop a trend but then it broke uh, on today T today's um, Wednesday uh, the price gapped lower and proceeded to move almost as low as like four percent so here when we analyze the daily wolf wave first of all you have to understand that the daily wolf wave is a longer time frame these are cycles that are going to be lasting um, two to three two to three three to four cycles that's four days upon entry so one two three four and then you got to decide like if the price is not um, moving at an accelerating rate right because we, we talked about the, the the 25 degree angle and then when price starts moving um, fast in the in your direction supporting a, a strong uh, bullish wolf wave then the price should create should be able to allow um, should accelerate higher um, increasing the increasing the rate at which the gradient is going to change from uh, a 25 degree angle to a 45 right so if we look at the trend right here okay it got back above the six then we know that usually if the if this bullish wave is really bullish, then the next um, line that we're going to draw is going to be representing 45 degree angle, and that's not what's what's happening. So you kind of already kind of sense see that the the trend, the the probability of this 
price on Tuesday uh, was not likely to follow the path of least resistance. It's following a different, it actually bucked the trend following a different path and now forming, uh, now now kind of probably continuing the this trend line here, which is still representing um, maybe like a 30 degree, 25 degree angle. And now because there's a 78 minute um, a 78 minute wolf, bearish wolf wave uh, that this 45 degree angle that I just modeled in here would would be the path, would be the next path of least resistance supporting the bearish uh, wolf wave that's on on the uh, on that on the time frame that we uh, just recently traded here. Okay, so I hope hope that helps with understanding how wolf waves work from uh, from from the way that I use it. You can make up it's a this is a drawing those trend lines representing a 30 degree angle and then and then modeling the next um, trend line that's modeling the 45 degree angle is a is very common okay so you want to use that as um, as your analytical assessment for how price reacts uh, on that specific day because once you, once it breaks one of those trend lines, then you have to reevaluate the whole wave setup and, and, and maybe even wait for the next new wave, bullish bearish wave setup. All right, so thank you very much and have a great day.